Hello everyone, and before I begin, I first want to announce that a member of the Alchemaker community, Agent Riley, has, after several months of hard work, made their own Alchemaker website, which contains, I believe, all of the playable Alchemaker games at the moment. So, of course, it's still a work in progress, but you can find tons of games on this website by just clicking the games list and then you can filter them out by the genre. For example, you can even find Coin Mania here, the game that we made, but yeah, you can find tons of other games here as well. For example, if you wanted to uh, maybe find some kind of clicker game by the retail genre there's tons of those as well maybe science genre is your thing and yeah with that said definitely go take a look at this website it's linked in the description and now let's move on to learning about css welcome to episode 2 of the algae maker css tutorial course and in this one we're going to be talking about css selectors or more specifically classes and identifiers since they are the ones that you are most likely to come across in algae maker and just to say a little bit of a heads up selectors in CSS are actually extremely, extremely important, right? Without understanding at least the fundamentals of selectors, you basically won't be able to style anything. So this might even be the most important video as part of this course. So I really recommend you to watch this one through because it covers very, very important topics. But to begin with, a CSS selector selects the specific HTML elements that you want to style, right? It comes from the name, selectors, select HTML elements. Next up, there are five types of selectors in CSS. Those are, first of all, simple selectors. Uh, these select elements based on name, ID, and classes. And in this episode, we're going to be talking mainly about the ID and the classes. Then there are the pseudo class selectors, and these are selectors which select elements based on a certain state. We're going to cover these in a different future video. Same with pseudo element selectors, which select and style a part of an element. Next up, we have the combinator and the attribute selectors, which we won't cover in this uh, tutorial course, since in order for them to be used effectively, you would need to have full control over HTML, which unfortunately we do not have with Adobe Game Maker. But the first selector I'm going to talk about is the identifier selector, right? Identifier selectors use the ID attribute of an HTML element to select it. I'll show you what this means in just a second. For now, just remember that the ID of an HTML element is unique within a page. That means the ID selector is always used to select only one element and each thing in Idle Game Maker, that is each building, each upgrade, each button, each achievement and so on, has its own ID selector with which you can select it for styling. All right, so just to kind of show you how I actually found this is that if you click inspect element right on your game and dig around a little bit, you can find uh, these divs with an ID of for example, thing-1, thing-2, thing-3, and so on and so forth. And each of these is an individual thing in your game, right? Uh, this is in their ID attribute. Now, as a little bit of a step up from the definition of an HTML element, which I gave you in the previous episode, you can now definitively think of HTML elements as these elements in the inspect element window, which start with the div tag and end with slash div. Just know that if it starts with a div and ends with slash div, it most certainly has an ID and you can style it using that ID, which I will show in just a second. That brings me to my next point, is that there are many other HTML elements with an ID in Idle Game Maker, and to find them, you simply use the inspect element function as mentioned. But, you know, most of these HTML elements are actually included in the big blue style sheet, which we combined in our last episode. So now let's move on to one of the most important parts of this episode, and that is identifier selector syntax. So in order to style an HTML element with an identifier, you first combine the ID of the HTML element found in the inspect element window with the hashtag symbol and curly brackets in your code like this. So you have hashtag, some identifier, then curly brackets, and then some styling properties. Right, so in order for you to truly understand what I'm talking about, I'm going to show to you the whole process, right? So let's say I want to style my metal detectors. All I need to do is click inspect element, and this is the HTML element for our metal detectors, right? It's this div right here. It has an ID of thing zero. All right, and this is what we're going to need. Let's just copy this. Now, after I move back to my style sheet and select the metal detector with its unique ID of thing zero, add a right facing curly bracket and left facing curly bracket and give it some styling properties, you know, for example, background. Uh, let's give it a color of the dark golden rod and a color. This is just text color. 
of yellow. Now when we save those changes, this is how our metal detector will look like in game. And this is really really cool because using identifiers like this, we can easily style individual elements inside our game. So hopefully that sort of made you understand how identifiers are very useful with CSS. Now you might have noticed that once we hover over this building, it once again turns blue. And in order to fix that, you would need to know about the hover pseudo class, which we will not cover in this episode because we're already getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. But let's now continue. All right, so we've shown this example already, but uh, for another example, you can find the ID of the store box as well. Uh, select it like this in your CSS and let's say you want to give it a border of a width of 5 pixels and a red color and this is how it would look like in your game so yeah pretty exciting stuff hopefully by now you understand identifier selector syntax and how you can use it to style certain HTML elements inside of your game now another very very important selector that you will need to know about is a class so what are classes well a class selects HTML elements with a specific class attribute this means that an HTML element can have an identifier, which we've shown previously, but it can also have a class attached to it. Now, what's the point of this? Well, the point of this is that multiple HTML elements can have the same class, right? And this is the main difference between classes and identifiers. An HTML element can only have one identifier, but multiple HTML elements can share the same class. Naturally, this then means that a single CSS class can be used to style groups of HTML elements. Now, HTML element can also have multiple classes attached to them at once and you can append multiple CSS classes to a thing using the class property and the CSS class value right the same as with IDs a lot of built-in idle game maker CSS classes can be found using inspect element and I will show an example of this in just a second as well but uh, you know with that said most built-in CSS classes are actually included in the big blue style sheet uh, however those that are not can again be found using inspect element right, so we've talked about the id selector syntax now let's uh, talk about how you can create your own custom classes of so syntax with the class selector so custom classes are created with a period so a dot character followed by a class name this is the template for classes right this is the code inside of our style sheet or inside of our css section so you first declare a new class with a dot, some class name, then curly brackets, of course, and some styling properties inside of it. And you can then assign these classes to a thing using the class class name property. So for example, once again, let's say we want to style our metal detector so that its background color is dark golden rod and its text color is yellow. So we would first create the metal detector class inside of our CSS section or our style sheet. And then we would append it to some kind of building, in our case, our metal detector building, using the class class name property. And this is how it would look like in game. So I've shown you how to do this uh, in real time using a, an identifier, but you can also do that exact same thing with a class. And this is kind of to show you that you can achieve the same result in CSS using various different methods. As a last thing in this video, I'm going to show you a prime example on how you can use classes to your advantage. So in my game, I want to style each one of my buildings. Have it be that golden theme that we've seen throughout the video. So how would we actually go about doing this? Well, first, let's uh, click on some kind of building uh, and then hit inspect element. And now let's kind of try and see what classes our buildings have. Because Metal Game Maker usually makes it so specific things. So for example, buildings, upgrades, achievements, and so on have their own specific class here we can find it here are the classes of our little things and this is what we are looking for the building class so let's now move into our code all right so now i'm back in notepad plus plus and i just want to scroll through here and find it myself so i'm just going to use this magnifying glass to find it for me so let's type in here dot building and here we go we got the building class right here and all we now need to do is add the background property with the dark golden rod value and the color property with the yellow value all right and now that we've done that by uploading our css style sheet to file garden and then saving our changes that way this is how our buildings look like now once we hover over them they are still blue but we'll address this in a future episode and so we require a pseudo class for that but the last thing in this video i'm going to change is style the upgrades in the same way and it's actually going to be your optional challenge for this video so try your best to 
style all of our buildings using a single class in the exact same way that we've styled these buildings. We're gonna have to use a different class since these are upgrades, but the process is pretty much the same. So pause the video, give the challenge a go, and if you get stuck or won't know how to solve it, don't worry, I will guide you through the process myself. Alright, welcome back. Hopefully you've given the challenge a go since it's the best way that you can learn during these videos. Uh, but now I'm going to show you how to do it myself. So first things first, you once again want to click on some kind of upgrade, then go into inspect element. And once again, find their common class that all upgrades in Idle Game Maker have. And that is, you guessed it, the upgrade class, right? Pretty simple. So now all we have to do is just copy it, go back into Notepad++. And the dot .upgrade class is actually not listed in the big blue style sheet, which might be the thing that you got stuck at. Uh, so we're going to have to add it ourselves. And it's actually pretty simple. Don't worry. All you have to do is add the dot upgrade class and add these curly brackets and now all we have to do same as with the buildings add the dark golden rod background and the color of yellow now once we save our changes hopefully our upgrade should look the same as our buildings and yep we can now see that our upgrades are styled in pretty much the same way as our buildings are now there's the same problem with them as with the buildings and that is that once we hover over them they once again turn blue but once again this will be addressed in a future episode all the upgrades automatically get turned blue as well and that is because if we go back into our style sheet we can see that upgrades which are owned so right here automatically get a preset background now you can change this if you want to but i'll be changing that in a future episode so you know just remember that you can do stuff like this as well all right and that will be the end of this episode thank you very much for watching hopefully you found this tutorial useful and as i said in the beginning of the video selectors are very important to learn because they're the backbone so to speak of styling anything with css so if you feel confused about anything don't hesitate to ask a question in the comments i'll try my best to answer every single one but with that said make sure to like comment and subscribe and if you really enjoyed what i do here feel free to check out my patreon for only two dollars a month you can get some pretty nice perks such as having your name included in the outro of my videos so once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one